Hello, I made this effect quite a while ago using Houdini, but now we will try and recreate it in Blender. Uh, so the main effect here is actually the morphine between the two balls, and uh, we will be doing that with geometry nodes. We will have three main steps. The first one is going to be the, the models. So we're going to do this one uh, with, um, with modifiers to have some flexibility. Uh, you can apply them, uh, but I will show you in the tutorial that if you apply them, you can have a little more control with the, the bevel of your edges. Uh, but uh, the fact that we we do not apply the modifier will give us more flexibility with changing the shape. The second step is the geo nodes setup. Uh, trust me, this one is not complicated at all. Uh, we will have two ways of doing this effect actually, but I will be uh, choosing one that I find best and, and simpler, and I will explain uh, uh, why we will choose this one and not the other, and when to use the other one. The last step is shading. And uh, for this step, it's actually quite straightforward. So we will be using the mask we created here to drive the morph effect. We'll be using that one to, to drive the shading as well, so uh, we'll just assign one color uh, for the first, uh, uh, for yeah, for the part where the mask is zero and then another one for the part, the mask where it's one. Uh, but yeah, you will see it's really simple. As I said, we have two approaches, so we have the one using uh, indices and then the one using proximity. So uh, the, the one with the index, uh, it, there is a constraint, so the, the two models need to have the same topology, which means they need to have the same uh, number of, of polygons because we will be associating uh, each face with the one that has the same index. So in case there is an extra face in the first mesh, for example, um, we, we don't know if, yeah, I think it's going to be associated with tree because it's, it's going to try to extrapolate, but this means that these two points or these two faces will be uh, on the same face on the target geometry, which is not ideal. Uh, this creates some issues like what we call Z fighting, where two uh, polygons have the same um, Z coordinate compared to the camera view, so you have a little bit of flickering, for instance. But uh, when we have the same topology, this, this method is actually a lot easier and flawless. The second method is geometry proximity. Uh, so this one uses the closest point to the target geometry. Uh, this one doesn't need the constraint uh, to have the same topology as the sample index one. Uh, but the issue with this one is that it doesn't always give consistent results. Maybe sometime in the future I will do another tutorial to tackle this method. But the one we're going to be using uh, in this tutorial is going to be this one. Just bear with me, when we get to the geonode setup part, I will uh, explain this in a little more detail. We will start with creating the first mesh. Uh, so. We either you can add single vert like this. Uh, I think you need to enable the extra objects in the add-ons, or you can do it with a cube and then go into edit mode, M merge uh, at center. I think this works as well. Either way, uh, so we have our vert. We'll go. Um, we we have the rough shape of the ball, so this is going to be our scale. Uh, we will go to edit mode and then extrude. Uh, sorry, so extrude. We can extrude. Uh, we can constrain into the y-axis so that we create the first base of our ball like this and then we can do stuff, something like this we will uh, after that we will add our screw uh, modifier like this, and then uh, make sure to flip the normals. And then we can add a bevel. Uh, I, I found that when you set it to depth, it gives a better result because we will drop a uh, subdivision surface, and uh, I found that with, a, with the one set to depth, it gives a better result. Here we're going to have to input a really small value to try and keep uh, try and keep uh, the shape of our ball. So we'll add a sub B modifier. You can see here, uh, without the bevel, we get this, and with the bevel. So here you can play with the how, how sharp we want our edges to be. Yeah, this is too much, so divide it by two, maybe something like this. I might even change the profile of our... Of our... Something like this, maybe. Um, and then we'll add a solidify modifier. Something like this works, and then uh, we can shade auto smooth. We have this. If it's too much, the thickness is too much. Yeah, so here if you want more resolution, you can go to the screw modifier and then set this to 64, for example. You'll see you'll no, no longer see the facets. We'll rename this bow one. It's very important to have the statistics enabled so we can see uh, the number of uh, vertices and faces on our bow. Now we'll create the second bow by Shift D, duplicating the first one. Um, and rename it to bow two. And then we can go to side view going to vertex mode, 
and then uh, Alt Z to toggle uh, X ray mode, and then, for instance, move the shape to something like this. Let's see, now the. Yeah, as you see, uh, so my goal is to have. You see the first one? It has a 6,900, and then that's the goal for the second one as well. So I need to make sure when I move my vertices uh, that at the end I get. You can see when there is a switch, and uh, you can see here there's like a sort of a jump. Whenever there's that, it's usually an indication that uh, the topology changed. So I'm trying to create a shape that's a little different, but at the same time, I want to maintain my topology. And let's do some. Hold on, let me see. Does this work? No, way too much. This is the drawback of this method is that uh, this is very fiddly. So yeah, let's let's do something like this. So if we compare the two, yeah, we have this one and this one. So they're fairly different. We can work with this. All right, now off to the fun part. We'll add the plane. We can hide our two objects and then me. Split this, switch this to uh, geometry nose error, and then we're gonna add one, call it morph, and set it to fake user just in case. And so here we can just delete these ones, doesn't matter. Okay, so now we'll try to explain what we're gonna do with this morphing situation. Let's say this is my first shape index zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three. Then let me pick another color. Let's say this is my gold shape, so in here. Then, I don't know, here. We're doing a representation in, in 2D, but it's exactly the same in 3D. Uh, so for my shape, this is going to be 0, 1, 2, and then 3. So this is what I meant by the same topology. So the fact that we have the same number of vertices, we can associate each vertex to another one using the index. So 0 is going to be matching with 0, 1 to 1, etc. And the, the neat part is that we have a node um, called set position in geometry nodes that allows you to, to move a certain point to another position as long as you get the, the position of the goal tar of the target. So the, uh, we're going to use the index to fetch the position of this point and then feed it into the, the original uh, point in, geom in the geometry. But uh, the neat part is that this transition between, uh, between uh, this position and this one it's, it doesn't have to be boolean, it doesn't have to be either 0 or 1. It can be a float value between 0 and 1. So this is where our mask is going to play uh, its role. We're going to use the mask to be able to control this transition in both in time and uh, we can also control like the, the the shape. So we can use, for instance, a gradient texture to control how this uh, transition happens. So we're going to say we want it to start from a minus x and then it's going to go to plus x, for example. So yeah, this is this is the this is the powerful part is that this transition uh, is a float. Uh, so we're going to be using a mix, a mix uh, yeah, a mix node. Uh, you have uh, multiple ones, either mix RGB or mix. So mix RGB or mix vector is the same because it's a uh, it's three three component vectors. So we will be using a mix vector. The first thing we will do is uh, drag our two objects into the node editor. Um, so let's say this is the. Actually, I can make I can make the second one uh, a little smaller, like this, to have a, an even more prominent transition. Click like this to pin this geometry nodes network so that it doesn't switch to another one when you change objects. It's quite handy. Um, okay, so now uh, I will drop a set position node, right? I will plug my first geometry into it, and then this is what I talked about earlier. We just need to know the position of each point of this second geometry, and then once we plug it into this position here, this set position node is going to uh, move all the points of this first geometry into the new position we just plugged. Uh, and then we're going to drop sample index. Um, so here, this node, what it does is that you feed it a geometry, and then the type of data you want to fetch, and then the index at which you want to fetch that data. So here, the data we want to fetch is obviously going to be position. Right, we'll plug that into value, and then you see here, uh, it's gray, which means this accepts floats values, whereas our position value is a vector, so we're going to have to change this one to vector. And then we're going to leave it at points. Um, and for the index, so here, geometry into geometry, right, because this is the target, this is the geometry at which we want to fetch the value of the position. So here you can switch, for every index, it gives you the position of your uh, point on this geometry. But for our sake, since we will be uh, linking each index to the other one, uh, this needs to be dynamic, so 
this needs to point to every index of this uh, uh, initial geometry. So we'll have to use an index node. Like this. Uh, you, yeah, this might be confusing at first. This is called, in geometry nodes, it's called context. So the context of this index node is actually this one, this geometry, not this one. Because once we, we plug this value here um, into a position, uh, the geometry nodes is actually done backwards. So it will start from the set position, it will go back, see the sample index, and it will know that this index value is actually pointing to this one. Then we'll add a mix vector, right? And the goal is to mix between, so yeah, I'm going to plug it in B. The goal is to mix between the first the, the position, sorry, we just uh, sampled here, and the position of our points, which is the same as this one. So here, and then I'm going to add an output, a group output, yeah. Now we can see this is... Uh, with this factor we can play, you can see it's, it's morphing between the first and the second one. But well, now we have a float factor that allows us to morph between the two shapes. You can see we don't have any... Uh, let me disable wireframe. We don't have any artifacts or anything because the topology is quite consistent between the two meshes. Now what we need to do is to actually drive this factor here by a, a texture of some sort. We said we're going to be using a gradient texture. So if I look for gradient... Uh, by the way, yeah, you can swap uh, with Alt-S, you can swap uh, nodes so that if you want your starting shape to be the other one, it's yeah, it's up to you. Um, and here, if we... you can use the viewer node in geometry nodes actually. Control shift click uh, and then, yeah, it needs to be linked to a geometry as well, so we'll use this one here. Sorry, I have my... Uh, here, I have my... Um, Attribute text enabled, which shows the value of the attribute. You can just disable that one. We will we'll see the color instead. So here you can see our texture. You can, for instance, drop in a gradient. No, sorry, a uh, a color ramp, right, to tighten up these uh, values a little bit, so that the transition is more prominent, like this. And then we can control uh, the origin of this using. Uh, I can use a position node, and then math node, right. Uh, vector math, yeah. And then, uh, since I also want to control the axis, so where it starts, in case I wanted to start from the y-axis, for example, uh, there is something called uh, vector rotate. Uh, so, because usually it's hard, it's hard to uh, control the rotation, you need to go through something called Euler uh, rotations. It's so the goal of this of these nodes is actually to simplify that operation. So I will plug this into a vector, and then here I want I will put it into a z-axis. Then I can yeah, hold on, sorry. I'll plug this here, subtract. So this allows me to control the the origin of the of the gradient, and then I will plug this into vector. As you can see, here I can rotate. I can choose where my effect starts. And the, here, if I play with the x value, you can see I can control the effect. So we can keyframe this. You can even mix the two, like double keyframe this one and this one, and have like some really uh, nice results. So let's say I just want to put this one to ninety, so that it goes through the y y axis. And then we have this. It's quite fiddly as well. Okay, so you can see this is our mask, so whatever it's dark, it's black, it's, uh, it means it's a value of zero for the factor, for this factor here. And whenever it's white, it means it's a value of one. So we're going to move this down a little bit, and then we'll plug this value into our factor. Now if we go back, yeah, if we can, we can just hide this, you can see that, <laughs> you can see the transition between the two. Uh, here you can make it a little smoother if you want by setting this to uh, maybe ease like this, yeah and then here by moving this factor here you can control transition, you see I also like the fact that it's quite deformed like this, it gives it that it gives it that clay effect as well since uh, these are uh, clay balls uh, originally uh, we can see if we can play with this ease in, maybe it will give us another result You can see it from up top, yeah. It's quite nice, I find. You can even like fake, so when you do your keyframes, like leave a little bit like this, uh, so it simulates a little uh, some imperfections. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, if I remember, I did the same in Houdini. I left a little bit so that it creates this uh, uh, weird deformation at the end. Uh, yeah, one last thing I think uh, I need to tell you in case you stumble upon. Uh, so here, when you keyframe, for instance, let's say, uh, we'll start at this value, and then uh, I to keyframe this, and then go to 40, and move it a little bit, like this, and then keyframe again. You can see that the animation is happening, right? But uh, we don't see our keyframes in, in case we want to add some ease in, for example. You need to switch to uh, graph editor, for instance, or dope sheet, and you need to disable this to be able to see your, uh, your keyframes. That's very important. 
Uh, so let's go to graph editor and then disable this, and then normalize. Maybe here we can add some, uh, you know, the classics uh, or something like this. And then scale down. Yeah, let's see how this looks. You know, it creates some sort of uh, easing effect. Yeah, it doesn't matter. At this point, it's just uh, like this. I'm just showing you the method. Like, the shape is not the best. <laughs> you can try and play with the shapes to get something you like uh, better. Okay, so now uh, what's left is actually the shading. So what we will do is um, we need to store this, this mask here. Uh, let me show you this mask. We need to store the value of the mask because... Sorry, it's not alpha, it's color. Yeah. Because we will be using this uh, mask to drive the texture, so we need to store it somehow. The way you do that is using a neat node called store, uh, named attribute, right? Um, it takes a geometry uh, as an input since it needs to map the attribute onto a geometry, so necessarily it will have a geometry input. You just put your main geometry into it. And then here, uh, we will call it, um, I don't know, morph mask, for instance. Morph mask like this, and then we will plug the color simply into our value here, and then we'll set this. Yeah, it's float. It's already set to float. So now, when we go to our shader editor, when we call an attribute and call it morph max, I will copy it. Uh, we'll already have it uh, set. And the one last thing is uh, you can add a set material uh, here so that so let me click uh, on this, add new material. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep material and then set it to a material here. So that uh, our material has a because if you do it directly here, it doesn't work. This is how it works in geometry nodes. You need to do it in the network view. Uh, and then, yeah, now we can unplug this. If we go to uh, shaded mode, so uh, um, render mode, uh, we can go to our material tab like this, and then uh, we can add an attribute. And here, if we paste our mask, you can see if I plug it into the base color here, you can see our mask, which we can use to drive all sorts of things. You can use it to drive the metallic map, the roughness map, whatever you like. Normals, you can even add some displacement. Uh, so, for instance, you, can, you could do some uh, mix color like this and plug the factor. Uh, into the factor th here, and then red, and then this one, put this one in blue. I don't, I don't remember the colors I did. Um, you see how this transition? Here it's not very, uh, since we use the quite some bit of ease in, if I go to my Geometry Nodes editor, and then, for instance, I tighten up this more, you can see, you can see the difference a lot more, like this, between the two colors. But yeah, do not forget that uh, this is, uh, this still, you can still do stuff with your original mesh, so you can, for instance, rotate in, like, keyframe the movement, so as you see in the video, I also did, like, a little jump animation, at the same time as the morphine, so you can do that as well here. Or, uh, for example, you can play with your original meshes here using a transform um, transform geometry. So with this, you can, for instance, rotate your uh, your target goal um, like this. Yeah, this is weird. Wait, hold on. Maybe yeah, like this. So you see, this is the goal. This is the final. If I if I switch, it will switch to the the target. This time is going to be the original geometry, but rotated with twenty six degrees. It's quite interesting. Like so, you can you can if you keyframe this these uh, values as well, you can create some quite uh, neat effects. And yeah, the fact that uh, our topology is mainly quads means that we can do uh, a lot of deformation without having any uh, artifacts, which is quite good. That's it for the tutorial, I, I hope it gave you some ideas to try some things of your own. Have fun!